Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at MSI's latest entry into the budget 12th gen market. This is the MSI B660M Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we're taking a look at MSI's B660M Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4. And this is intended to be a relatively budget board for those dipping their toes into the 12th gen market. This video is actually being recorded two weeks before the actual release of this board and also the new 12th gen processors featuring locked performance cores. So some of this will be total speculation. I will try and give you as many facts as I possibly can, but due to certain circumstances, i.e. not knowing what processors will be released, what the specification of those processors will be, and also not knowing the price of the motherboard, we're not off to a particularly good start. But certainly we will go through the board itself, have a complete tour, strip down, look at all the individual components, cooling, etc. And then towards the end of the video, I'll come back with some speculation and my thoughts and what I think will make this board a particularly good choice for those using 12th gen processors. So let's start first of all with the board itself and who it is actually aimed for. Now this is designed for micro ATX cases, hence it has the M in the part number, so M660M, which denotes micro ATX. So micro ATX form factor board is a slightly cut down version. If you've been looking at perhaps the 690 boards and you're thinking, well, that's a lot of money to spend. I'm not particularly gonna be overclocking, but I do wanna get a nice, good quality board. Then this is possibly gonna be right up your street. You do have an absolute ton of features on here, which we'll go through when we do the unboxing. Obviously some of the main features, which you're probably gonna want in the board, if you're looking at this particular thing, if you search for B660, Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff, then yeah, this is what you're gonna come up with. So it has got Wi-Fi built in, so we've got Wi-Fi 6 from Intel, and also we've got Bluetooth 5.2. Other than that, we've got some other really cool features, such as a 12 plus one plus one power delivery system. It's a dual rail system, so essentially they're kind of doubled up, but they are using 60 amp chokes, so looks to be pretty good. And there is also one of the most substantial cooling systems I've ever seen on a board like this. It does weigh an absolute ton, I'm not joking. Just the actual heat sinks themselves taken off the board and measured, we're looking at almost half a kilo of cooling capacity just in the heat sinks. So that gives you an idea of how heavy the board is overall. But we'll go through that and strip that a little bit later on. So this is obviously for DDR4 systems. If you're looking at a board for DDR5, there are other options available on the market. But this is for primarily DDR4 setup. So if you've got an older, maybe AMD system and you've invested in some DDR4 RAM and you want to carry that through into your next setup, then this is a good choice. Obviously, if you want to go for the DDR5 version, there will be those available as well. We'll try and link some of those in the video description as well so you can check out some of those. But ideally, this is getting this for those people upgrading older systems, bringing them more up to date, 12th gen processor, but still keeping that DDR4 RAM. It will support up to DDR four speeds of 4,800 megahertz. Now clearly the Intel processors do not natively support that, so that is an overclocked mode. Generally, in non-overclocked, you're looking at a maximum of 3,200 megahertz, but this will go up to, like I said, 4,800, so that potentially is gonna be useful for some. The board itself is a locked board, so if you're looking at doing any multiplier overclocks on your processor, sadly, you cannot do that. Although, because this has that really cool power system, the power delivery, there are things built into the motherboard itself, such as core boost and performance enhancements, which will allow you to just squeeze a little bit more performance out of those locked processors. And obviously, if you're buying an unlocked one, it's a little bit pointless, really. But yeah, each to their own. So let's take a look at the packaging. We'll go through uh, what we get and we'll take a good look at the board. So as you can see, first of all, we've gone through all that already, so you know what it is. Uh, supports TPM 2.0 straight out of the box and also has uh, Windows 11 compatibility, so the BIOS as a default on this, we'll be ready to install with Windows 11, so things like Secure Boot and all that kind of stuff will be enabled. On the side of the box, on the label, I'll give you a breakdown of some of the specifications, a little bit uh, more condensed, so I'll give you a quick close-up of that one. On the back of the board, it goes into some more detail about some of the features, so we've got extended heatsink design. Uh, I think that's an understatement, it really is. It's a huge heatsink design. You've got 2.5 gigabit LAN, that is standard on here, so you've got one LAN port, supporting up to 2.5 gigabits per second, is backwards compatible obviously with gigabit and 10100 etc. Uh, Lightning Gem 4, so we've got PCI Express Gem 4 on here, which is supplied from the processor itself into your M.2 slot, 
etc etc and obviously your primary graphics card slot you also got m.2 shield frozer so that is basically cooling for your m.2 drives that is supported on both drives which is nice to see quite often we find with some of these boards these days they actually only have one actual drive covered so there's a little bit of future proofing a little bit of expandability there also supporting 20g lightning usb so we have got a usb gen 3.2 times 2 type c slot on here so you can get the fastest transfer speeds available on the usb 3 interface you also got frozer ai cooling so that is basically an intelligent way of the system cooling how it needs to depending on various temperatures such as your cpu your gpu motherboard temps etc etc that is actually in the bios which we will try and do a bios video on this uh, showing you the bios in its entirety sadly at the moment we don't actually have a processor on hand to fire this up and test it so there won't be any performance gramps anything like that we won't be seeing the bios bios flashes etc uh, that hopefully will be coming up as soon as the 12th gen locked processors are actually available later on in 2022 also we've got memory boost as we discussed a little bit before so yes technically the real main difference of the b660 chipset is the ability to actually overclock the ram if you're looking at lower end boards such as the 610s etc they are going to be completely locked in terms of both cpu overclocking and also unlocking those xmp profiles in your ram this is where the b660 does kind of take things up a notch Yes, you don't get full overclocking abilities for your unlocked processors, but you do get that also important XMP profile and RAM overclocking. Like I said earlier, we've got Core Boost as well. So because of the quality of the VRM setup on here and the fact that you're not actually going to be overclocking the CPU in terms of multipliers, etc., it is going to be able to use those power stages to the best efficiency on those locked processors. On the bottom, goes through some more specs. I'll give you a close-up of the specifications there and also gives you an IO overview of the motherboard's input and output on the back. So that's pretty much it for the actual tour of the box. Let's take a look and see what we actually get inside. And we get, first of all, the motherboard itself, which is, is ridiculously heavy, it, actually insanely heavy. So in the box, we get uh, a load of accessories. So we'll go through those bit by bit. So you get the MSI badge to stick on your case or wherever you want to. The thank you for choosing MSI leaflet, which you can scan QR codes and register, etc. MSI shout out, so if you want to do a review, you can get cash back or vouchers, discounts on certain other MSI peripherals. There is a set of stickers, so we've got some uh, slightly bizarre stickers for camo type print. So if you wanted to, you can stick those on various parts of the motherboard, the chipset, coolers, etc, etc. Yeah, might be uh, somebody's thing, not entirely mine. You get a driver DVD, which uh, potentially could be useful because it's quite a new chipset. More stuff from MSI, trying to get you to buy their stuff. MSI rewards program, and also another QR code to look at other MSI peripherals and components. You get a quick installation guide, and you get a user manual, which goes through in actually pretty good details, nice and clear, nice size actually. Even with my old man eyes, I can read this and see what the bits are on the board and what plugs in where, so nice one MSI. Also included, we've got a couple of M.2 lockers. Now these are actually MSI's new kind of semi-patented M.2 retaining mechanisms. So these essentially screw into the pillars, which they would normally on M.2 supports. And then there's like a little clip which fastens around to lock your drives into place rather than relying on one of those tiny screws which quite often get lost or uh, drop if you're not using a magnetic screwdriver. So nice to see those, you get two of those included for both of the M.2 slots. You get two SATA cables, which I think is actually a little bit on the stingy side, considering how many SATA ports are actually on the board. Maybe maybe it's a, a way of saving some money. I would like to maybe see another two, but again, if you're not gonna be using any SATA drives, which I guess are starting to be kind of phased out these days, then yeah, maybe it's not the end of the world, but yeah, a little bit stingy regardless. We get a couple of antenna, screw on antenna using those SMA connectors. This is for the built-in Intel Wi-Fi 6. And last of all, you get a little gift from MSI because they love us so dearly. And there is a combination key ring, keychain tool set, which basically is a cross-headed screwdriver and also a flat-headed screwdriver. So yeah, that could be quite handy. Now, by the end of this review, I will actually have slightly larger arm on this side because this is exceptionally heavy. You can probably tell just by looking at the pictures and some of the B-roll you've seen already, this is a chunky boy. It really, really is. So to point out the obvious, we've got an absolutely huge overhanging heatsink here on the VRM. 
which in itself is somewhere in the region of about 230 grams, I think I measured it. You'll be seeing it from B-roll, I have actually measured them, I just can't remember cool the actual specifications from my head. This top one here is somewhere in the region of about 110, 120 grams for this VRM section. Then also we've got the chipset cooler. This one itself over the B660 chipset is somewhere in the region of about 110 grams also. And then we've got two smaller ones for your N.2 drives here cleverly marked up with one and two just so you, if you take them off you know which one they come off of and those are each somewhere in the region of about 30 grams so in total we've got the best part of 500 grams or half a kilo of thermal management going on here already which is absolutely insane all of them are using seven watts per meter kelvin pads so nice and easy to use they actually do come off very easily quite often with some of the cheaper pads you find you take the uh heat sinks off and they rip the pads but these actually stayed all intact so awesome nice one msi so i think it's time to have a tour of the board so you'll see from some of the pictures i've taken from the b-roll you'll probably see it in its kind of slightly naked state so i've removed a lot of the heat sinks just so you can see things a little bit easier but i'll point some of the things out now so the first thing of note is actually the power delivery now this has got two eight pin eps connectors on the top here so cpu one cpu two even though there's one cpu so this means obviously you are going to be able to get a lot of juice into the board. Now you don't have to use both of those at the same time if you don't want to. You can just use a single 8-pin if you wanted. The choice is down to you. Obviously depending on what processor you're planning to use on this, you may wish to use both. But it seems odd that they've got two there. I think it seems to me like a, a slightly odd inclusion. Depending what the processors are likely to be, my opinion is that there's going to be a 12100, a 12400 and a 12600 coming out from Intel and possibly some lower end Pentium Golds and also some Celerons. But looking at the more kind of performance range, so the i3s, i5s, realistically, you're not gonna need those two connectors. And being that this chipset is kind of designed at those processors, do we really need that? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Let us know what you think in the comments. Obviously, if you did put an i7 on here or an i9, which potentially they may well release i7s and i9s, which are locked processors, i non-K versions, then again, this is gonna be perfectly suitable and may be used in that situation. At the moment, like I said, we don't know what processors are gonna be released, but normally this kind of board, the B660, the mortar range, are generally designed at that kind of mid-range or mid to upper tier. So I think realistically, most people will pair this with maybe a 12600, 12400, that should be it. At which point, I don't think you're gonna need both those connectors, but they're there anyway, as a potential safety thing moving forward. If this board ends up supporting 13th and 14th generation processors which potentially it might do now i don't know this for sure but it just seems a little bit odd looking at the processor cover in the middle here it does say on there lga 1700 which is what this board actually is it supports lga 1700 processors but if you look closely it actually says lga 1800 as well so potentially lga 1800 is going to have more pins obviously are they going to be compatible forward and backwards we don't know at the moment is the honest answer, but just thought that was a little bit of an unusual thing to see there. And also coupled with that power delivery, who knows what's gonna happen in the 13th and 14th generation. Okay, anyway, moving on. So we've got the uh, power delivery there. You've got the VRM. So there is a 12 plus one plus one setup. So 14 stages, all using the ISL 99360, which is basically a 60 amp unit on there. So nice bit of power delivery on there. Moving along from the VRMs, we've also got a rainbow connector in the top here and actually some of these connectors are really kind of cramped in there so there is a 5 volt addressable rgb connection in this top section and there is another two pin connector which is jsmb1 but there's no mention of it actually in the manual or actually on msi site so i'm not entirely sure what that is sometimes you get some of these boards where there is actually additional component places where they can plug things in during testing and manufacturing etc etc but it doesn't appear to be a user port. Moving across, we've got four RAM slots here. So this will support a whopping 128 gigabytes of RAM. Again, we can support up to 4,800 megahertz. Now it does come into some kind of conflict there depending on the RAM you're using. So you're not gonna be able to put all four sticks on there of RAM and get that speed. As you add more RAM, you may need to reduce that, especially depending on the ranks, et cetera, et cetera. So, I would say realistically for most people, DDR4 3600 if you're using all four sticks and as you're using less and less, you can go higher and higher. I'll put some links to the MSI manual when it comes out and maybe I'll get some cutaways of the actual manual where it shows 
the different RAM frequencies per setup, so I'll give you a better idea. Moving across, we've got a CPU fan header up the top here. Moving down from that a little bit more, there is a pump stroke fan one. So this is a multi-purpose header. All of the MSI headers are always multi-purpose anyway. You can pretty much use them for whatever you want to. So they will support things like PWM, voltage DC, and automatic mode. So depending on what you're plugging into, whether it's a fan, a pump, etc., etc. Easy to control in the MSI center, as we've done a video on, which you can check out up here. Moving down from that, we've got a lovely thing to see, which is the diagnostic D-LEDs. Really like those, very handy for diagnosing any issues. Although realistically, unless you actually physically install something incorrectly on here or use something which is incompatible, which is again, relatively unlikely, um, those should just go through and give you the boot message at the end, which is absolutely great. Moving down, got a 24 pin power connector, nothing unusual there, very standard. We've got a front panel connector here for both USB Type-C and also USB 3.0. So you can wire those to the front panels on your cases. More and more cases are starting to have USB Type-C on the front of them, so that's very handy to have that. That's going to be USB 3.2 Gen 1, or times 2. So that is going to be 5 gigabit per second max. Then you've got your USB 3s, which is kind of like the Type-A connections, which we're all used to seeing. Moving down a little bit more, so we've got the uh, the huge heatsink over the B660 chipset. Uh, you'll be seeing naked pictures of that coming up very shortly. Uh, not very exciting, I'll be honest with you. I was waiting to see something on there saying Intel B660 or something along those lines, and no, very underwhelmed. But anyway, there is a huge heatsink which goes over there again, around about 100, 120 grams worth of cooling potential there, although it's not going to get particularly hot, and obviously it doesn't require a fan, which is always nice. Moving across from that, we've got four SATA ports there, which are pointing inwards towards the case. And underneath that, we've got our front panel connectors. And there are actually six SATA ports on here, which is uh, yeah pretty awesome. If you're using certain combinations of M.2 drives, if you're using a secondary drive in here, you do lose SATA port two, I believe it is. Uh, obviously refer to the manual to be completely sure. Realistically, I can't imagine anybody using this board and filling up all six SATA ports and both M.2 ports is extremely unlikely, but anyway, the warning is there. So moving across now, so we've got our M.2 drive slot here. So this is our primary one. This one is connected to the CPU itself. So the CPU itself, direct connection, PCI Express Gen 4 for obviously the RAM and also M.2 slot and the top graphics card slot. So that's Gen 4 times 16. You've got Gen 4 times 4 for the M.2 drive. And also tucked away in there, which is going to be an absolute nightmare to get to. There is another fan header in there, again, multi-purpose, PWM, DC, etc. So that is that section there. Anyway, moving back down, so at the front here, we've got the front panel connector section. There's the TPM port, so for adding TPM headers, should you wish to. You've got JFP2, which is your, basically, speaker or buzzer connections, which you can use. I don't know how many people use those these days. Uh, let us know in the comments. Do you still use a buzzer, yes or no? Moving across from that, two more SATA ports, and then there is a couple of USB 2.0 headers, so you can connect up another two ports per header, so that's very useful, especially for cases and other peripherals, such as Corsair lighting, that kind of stuff. Then we've got another PCI Express Gen 3 slot, so this one is actually coming from the chipset, so it's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. Chipset is powering those two, CPU is powering those, so yeah, that kind of makes sense. So PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 for the M.2 drive, You've got PCI Express times one port there. So again, PCI Express Gen 3 times one. And this slot here, although it is a 16 size slot, it is actually only PCI Express Gen 3 times four wired. As you can probably see from the close-ups, it's not fully wired through there. This board actually does support Crossfire, bizarrely, which, uh, yeah, considering it's an Intel board, you'd think supporting Crossfire would be the last thing on their minds, but it does, and should any of you out there be crazy enough to attempt Crossfire in 2022, best of luck to you. <laughs> Let us know how you get on with that. Anyway, that's enough for that. So moving across, so we've got more front panel connectors here and RGB connectors. So there is also chassis intrusion, all that kind of stuff down here, and also the CMOS reset button, or switch rather, so you can just short that out. That is actually the very bottom one. There's actually a group of six pins there all together very closely, so there's a chassis intrusion and also the, uh, the battery reset, which is I don't like the position of that personally. I think that's going to be slightly problematic, although if it was next to the battery, that would be even more problematic because you'd never get to it if you've got a graphics card in place, which again is going to be 
potentially an issue if you set something in the BIOS wrong or you do something you need to reset your CMOS because memory training or whatever, actually removing the, the BIOS battery is going to be a pain. You will have to move the graphics card in pretty much all circumstances to do that. So moving along, we've got a, a J Rainbow connector, which is MSI's version of the 5 volt addressable RGB. Next that, another system fan header. So again, PWM, DC voltage, etc., etc. Then we've got a standard 12 volt RGB connection. There is your front panel header, which is all part of the audio chipset. This is using ALC 1200 chipset. So uh, eight channel sound, 7.1. Uh, you can connect to that via jacks or speed if, however you wish to do it. You've got some uh, reasonably high quality capacitors there for the audio or caps. So those are Nichicon caps, nice to see those. And I think that is pretty much it for the board. Not really much else I can say, and I'm actually quite glad because this thing's getting rather heavy. So let's take a look at the rear I.O. This is actually incredibly difficult to hold, actually just to show the I.O. because holding it, no, I can't do it. I'm gonna support it with both hands. It is a genuinely a really heavy board. Anyway, moving on. So I.O. wise, actually not too bad at all. So we've got four USB 2.0 ports there, uh, which is yep, absolutely fine, keyboard, mouse, etc., etc. Nice to see that we don't have a PS2 port anymore. They've completely omitted the PS2 port, which I, for one, I'm actually quite glad of because I don't think I've used a PS2 component in many, many years. Maybe uh, your mileage is different, but let us know if that is the case. So four USB 2.0 ports. Next that we've got a display port and a HDMI port. So HDMI, we're looking at HDMI 2.1. Yeah, less said about HDMI specs, the better. Display port support in Display Port 1.4. Essentially, depending on what processor you're using on here with its onboard graphics, you are going to get a maximum out of this of 4K 60 Hertz. Again, that is going to be processor dependent, so do check your processor before you make a purchase or you decide to buy a flashy monitor, which isn't going to run very well. So moving on a little bit, we've got our USB ports. So these are all grouped together. So these are going to be USB super speed ports, 10 gigabit per second for the Type A's. There's three of those, and then also you've got your Super Speed Gen 2 times 2 which is your USB Type-C, which is that one there, which is the fastest port on the board. Moving up, we've got a 2.5 gigabit LAN, so that is the Realtek RTL8125GR, I believe it is. I'll put the correct name on the uh, on the bottom of the screen there. Basically, it's 2.5 gigabit LAN, supports gigabit and 10100, etc., etc. Moving down, we've got our Wi-Fi 6 connectivity. So that is the SMA connectors for the, actually, it is a removable card. So even though it says Wi-Fi 6, there is actually a card, which is the kind of Wi-Fi, I think they call it M key or E key. And there is a couple of screws on the back, just there. So you can actually undo those screws, remove that and replace it with a more modern thing. So when Wi-Fi 10 or whatever comes out in the future, then you can replace those if you want to. Moving down from that, we've got the audio gain ALC 1200 chipset. So you've got the five outputs there. The red one is your main one, the speaker one, the one that uh, I don't like the fact that they're all co color coded like that, but I am starting to get used to it. So now I know if it's got a red one on there, yeah, that's the output. That's the one to plug my speakers into basically. You also have a speed if on there. So if you want to go for a speed if output to a home theater setup, you can do, or of course you can pump all the audio th through your HDMI or display port connections. So I think that is uh, pretty much it. If we take a look on the back of the board, again, nothing particularly exciting. You've got easy access to the screws to remove all of the heat sinks, etc. You've got your MSI keep out zones, all that kind of stuff. And I think that is uh, pretty much it. So it really comes down to, at the moment, again, this is two weeks before the actual product launch. So I have no idea what processors are gonna be out. I have no idea how much those processors are gonna cost. And frankly, I don't have any idea how much this board costs. Now, there have been some initial leaks, which have already been on the internet through late November into early December, where people have been saying this is going to cost around about 239 US dollars, which for me, I think is probably going to be a little bit on the high side. The, looking at the other boards on the market, potentially you might be better off going for one of MSI's actually Z690 boards, where you'll get a few more features. You'll get a faster DMI link between the processor and the chipset. This one is reduced down to DMI times four, whereas the Z690 chipset, you're gonna be looking at a DMI of times eight, so basically double the speed. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to what you wanna use it for, and ultimately, for me personally, it's gonna come down to price. Now, depending on what the processors come out, how much they're gonna be, I would actually really love to get involved with the 12th gen setup, especially with the lower end processors. So again, 12100, 12400, 12600, those are going to be my kind of baseline. 
but it's also going to have to be cost effective. So if this is going to be on the market in the UK for, I would say, somewhere in the region of about £150, I think, that for me would make it a worthwhile purchase, in my opinion, possibly even lower. Obviously, as it's getting longer and longer on the market, prices tend to dip, etc., etc. I think if this has got an initial release price of around about 150 160 and we can pick up maybe one of those new i5 processors for somewhere in the region of about 150 to 200 pounds, I think it actually make a really, really good, compelling choice. But let us know what you think about it in the comments section below. I think this is going to wrap it up. I really can't tell you much more about it. I'm excited to see what the actual prices are like. Uh, there will be CES coverage for this particular board. There will be a keynote from Intel as well, releasing uh, this chipset, processors, etc. So we'll all be keeping an eye on that and see what the deal is and be looking out for these in the shops in the coming weeks. So again, there will be links for these in the video description below. Thanks very much to MSI for actually sending it to us for uh, unboxing purposes. We do appreciate it and hopefully there'll be more to come. But I think that's going to wrap it up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.